Well, hello, and welcome back to the Recycled Cottage and Garden. And this is just a little short video on what I've been up to lately. Um, today I wanted to talk about small batch canning, when you have just little bits of things. So, one of the things that I did the uh, day before yesterday, I had half of a butternut squash and about three quarters of a little box of uh, uh, mushrooms that were sliced. So here's what I did with those because I didn't have anything planned to make. I don't usually plan stuff anyway, but there wasn't anything I wanted to do with those leftovers. So what I did was I peeled and chopped in cubes the butternut squash. I had enough for two pints and that's just water that's in them. Okay. With the mushrooms, when they were just straight out of the container, they filled three half pints. No, four, four half pints. I got one that didn't seal, so I'm gonna use that one. Um, and it's in the fridge. But what I put in with them was beef broth. Because normally if I'm gonna do something with mushrooms, add them to a soup or whatever, it's going to go in beef broth or with beef. So that's what I did. So I have three of these, one in the refrigerator because it didn't seal. Now, the mushrooms kind of float on the top, so a lot of this is liquid, but it'll be great in soups. And I'm not one that likes mushrooms um, just to eat them, especially the, these are uh, baby Bellas, which... I really like they're not as rubbery feeling in my mouth but even with that I'm more like the flavor than I like eating the mushroom so I'll put them in my ninja blender blend them up to a liquid and add them to the soup um, what I did today is I had about seven seven tomatoes that were getting really, really soft. One of them I had to cut about a quarter of it away. Um, and those were washed, cored, cut away the bad stuff. And including the skin, I left that on. I chopped them up, rough chopped them, threw them in my Ninja blender till it became more liquidy. Um, not totally, but pretty much. Now, if you've canned tomatoes before, you know that they will tend to do this all the stuff will float to the top once this is cooled because it's still warm yet um, and get when I get ready to use it I'll just shake it up add it to a soup or a stew or a whatever um, but the tomatoes are still perfectly fine what it does do is it tends to chop up all the seeds and everything too as well as the skin so you get all the nutrients that are in it and I didn't do didn't add anything extra to this. Um, I did pressure can all of these. So you don't have to add the lemon juice or the citric acid or the whatever. I did add a small teaspoon of uh, the citric acid to these. I just think it makes them taste better. And then I had, I think it was about seven or eight small plums and a small apple. Very small apple. Again, I all I did with the plums was cut them in half and take out the seed, chop up the rest, including the skins, put them in the Ninja blender. With the apple, I peeled it, cored it, and chopped it into small chunks. Put them together and in the Ninja blender, and then poured them, and I got two half-pint jars. Now... Um, I did add one spoonful of sugar for each one. I'm not a big jelly eater, so um, whether these gel up or not doesn't really matter to me. Um, they make a good topping for an ice cream. Uh, you can put some in a smoothie, because I, I do like to make smoothies. And there's not a lot of sugar to it. It, it wasn't even like a whole spoonful. It was like leveled off. Um, so not heating. I mean, this is the spoon I use. 
So if they don't gel up, because the apple has pectin in it, so that does tend to make them thicken up a bit. The ones I've made before with berries and what have you um, didn't set up like a jelly, okay? They're more of a syrupy kind of thing, which makes it great to put on ice cream or, you know, something else that's a dessert or whatever. Um, but it's perfectly fine to just spread some on toast because who wants it piled, you know, yay thick of jelly anyway? Not me. <laughs> anyway, so today... What I did, well, the other day, I had two of these and four of these in the canner. Um, I just processed for the length of time required the longest time. It wasn't going to hurt them. These are probably going to go in soup, so it doesn't matter if they're, they get a little mushy. But I think everything turned out just fine. The tomatoes needed 20 minutes. The jelly didn't really give me... A, anything in the book for uh, pressure canning um, but I figured okay 20 minutes pressure canned they're high acid basically you could water bath both the tomatoes and uh, the fruit but I just like the convenience of it being pressure canned I don't have to worry about it it's done it it's processed enough so that's what I did so I have Two of these and two of these. So there was only four jars in that pressure canner. Now to fill out the pressure canner, if you a little afraid it, something might tip over because it's not full. What I did was I added in some pint jars just filled with water, no lids on them or anything. You could, you could put um, any size jar that you wanted, fill it with good clean water, preferably, um, something that's been filtered so you filter all the stuff out of your uh, tap water that's up to you but any kind of water you can can it in a jar to be shelf stable um, for emergencies I have some bottles of water for emergencies so I didn't do that so um, I just filled empty jars and stuck them in between the other jars so that everything you know sat there nicely um, 20 minutes, I, I had completed things. I forget the time on these. It was longer. Um, but, you know, follow your directions. Um, I like the, uh, crap, can't think of the name of it. Well, it goes by the USDA recommendations, but they test a lot of other stuff. Um, I'll put the link in the show notes for this video um, they do have a book out that you can purchase I purchased one off of Amazon um, so those are available um, I find it very very helpful because it tells you not I mean the ball books that I had are old enough that they're out of date um, not that the food that I canned with those would have been bad had I still had some left from years ago um, but the new instructions are, are better, they're more clear, especially since I have come to Colorado, it's a high elevation. I'm at 7,700 feet, whereas most of my canning before was in Texas at nearly sea level. Big difference, different processing times, depending what you're doing, or if you're water bathing, it's a longer time period. If you are um, pressure canning, you have to use that 14 to 15 pound weight. Um, I don't use one with a dial. I just use a weight. So 15 pounds works. And that's for everything. So don't be afraid to spend a little time and a little water and a little electricity to can in small batches. Um, it's better than throwing food away. I don't like wasting food. I don't like wasting anything. Um, here in Colorado, they are real big on recycling. So we have a good-sized recycling dumpster outside our apartment building, and we can put anything recyclable in there. So um, I don't like wasting food. Foods these days are really, really expensive, and uh, I don't think anybody can waste food. 
You know, I, I don't think anybody can afford to do that. I don't think you can afford to waste anything. Um, I know some people who are um, planning their routes out so that they don't waste gas because the price of gas keeps going up. Well, price of everything keeps going up. So there's a little tip for you. Just if, if your things that you're canning are similar um, or doesn't matter the length of time you're processing, go ahead and do a small batch. It won't hurt anything. Um, now, another thing I will tell you, I have been canning meat raw. Um, at Sutton's Days calls it ugly chicken or ugly beef or ugly pork because it looks weird in the jar. Let me show you some. Okay. This is some beef that I, they were beef short ribs, boneless, that I got on Markdown. This is what they look like in the jar. Let me see if I can get it without. Okay, there. That's about as close as I'm gonna get. They, you put them in raw. You just chop it in cubes. Put it in raw. Leave the fat on. Don't unless it's something really yucky, like you know something that you can't even eat. You can cut that part off, but leave the fat in there. You want the fat. It helps with as the liquid gets pulled out of the meat. It makes its own broth. Now you will see above the liquid line, they're a darker color. That's from the air above it, but the air has been expelled out of these jars because they were pressure canned. So these are perfectly fine to sit on your shelf for future use, even though it's not filled up to here. You don't want to do that. If you feel better having a, a liquid all the way up to the top here, then you need to pre-cook your meat. But trust me, this is so much easier and so much faster. You don't have to cook anything. Just cut it into chunks and stick it in here. If you need more information on this, go to Sutton's Days. It's S-U-T-T-O-N-S-D-A-Z-E. She has a number of videos showing how she does this with everything. She started with chicken. She termed the coin ugly chicken. So... I now do ugly beef and ugly pork as well. In fact, I have a pork loin in the uh, refrigerator that's getting canned next. And I'll tell you what, it makes any cut of meat the most tender, fall apart, easy to chew you have ever put in your mouth. You could add seasonings if you wish to. I don't. I'll do that when I make whatever I'm going to make. But this is perfectly... Uh, thoroughly cooked it's you could open the i mean in, in case you didn't have electricity or any other way to heat up something you can open a jar and just start eating it it's that good um but that's something else that i did i had uh two batches in the canner with that one um just had that much meat that i'd gotten on sale so that works and you like i said Beef, pork, chicken, for sure. Um, now, this is not approved by the alphabet agencies, okay? I will also buy ham on sale uh, when it goes on sale, usually around Christmas or New Year's. I'll usually get an extra one. I might not this year because I have so much still. Um, but they go on sale and they're really cheap for poundage for meat. So what I do with that, because they are, um, I fully cook them, then I'll pack them, um, I'll, I'll chop them into cubes. You don't want very big cubes. And then I will pack them either in juice or in, if I have some in the pan, or um, just water. Doesn't matter either way. And then I have ham pieces to use. Now, that's not approved because they are cured meats, and that makes it denser. However, if you can, my theory, this is only my theory, I'm not telling you to do any of this. It is not approved. I'm comfortable doing it. I'm just telling you what I'm comfortable with. If you have any doubts whatsoever, do not do it. 
I don't want anyone getting ill. I don't want anyone getting sick. I don't want anyone having any issues. And I certainly don't need to be sued because you'd get nothing from me because I don't have a lot. Okay. I'm on Social Security and I live in HUD housing. Um, <laughs> so there you go. But I figure if you can make soups and can them and they have ham cut in cubes, then you could can it as long as you're not overpacking it and there's plenty of liquid in there with it. I have never had an issue doing this. However, it is not approved by the USDA or anyone else. Part of that is because the university that puts out the book doesn't has not tested it. Whether they don't want to or they just don't have time, I don't know. I'm going to put it down to, well, the USDA says it's not safe, so we're not even going to test it. That's kind of what I figure. But, you know, that's just the way that goes. Um, it's the same when I canned butter. I don't recommend it to anyone. But it made sense to me. I have had no issues with it. And it was the only way that I could store the amount of butter that I got on sale. It comes out more like halfway between melted butter and ghee. It, it's a little thicker than ghee. Ghee is more like a liquid. Um, this is a slightly thicker, but not by much. And it is pressure canned. Um, I'm not going to say anything more than that. I'm not going to show how to do these um, because they are not approved. That's just something I choose to do. I consider it safe. People worry about the botulism with butter. Butter is pasteurized. It won't have any. That's my theory on it. Plus, butter comes from the inside of the cow. Uh, it Botulism grows in the dirt, in the soil. So it's really more the vegetables you have to be concerned with when it comes to botulism. And it's very rare that that happens, and it's usually someone who doesn't know what they're doing, and they try something without really understanding. So do your own research. Highly recommend that. Um, but I would get this book. I will, uh, let me show it to you. This has replaced the ball book for me. It's the USD, the Complete Guide to Home Canning. And it may show backwards on here, I'm not sure. Um, but this is, it's this one's revised for, oh. National Institute of Food and Agriculture, Agriculture Information Bulletin number 539, revised in 2015. So it is a few years old, but it's the most up-to-date there is. I highly recommend this book. It's quite thick, easy to read, easy to understand. It walks you step by step through it. Um, I highly recommend this one if you want it. I, I'd recommend this over a ball book any day. Uh, a lot of the ball books give you minuscule basics and then a bunch of recipes. I'm not a recipe canner I can ingredients that I can then put together um, you, you'll find people that do both you'll find people that like you know prepared stuff ready to go open it and heat it and there you are I tend to like uh, just the ingredients like just the meat just the tomatoes just the squash just the mushrooms just the whatever's um, just that's easier for me to put a meal together with what I have uh, without having to run to the store. And I like doing the small batch canning. It doesn't take that long. Um, you don't wear yourself out being in the kitchen all freaking day long. And I have done that. Uh, two years ago when I got 50 pounds of tomatoes, it took me two days to process all of them and get them canned. So, yeah, I've done the long haul with it, and I've done the short. So, there you are.
please, please do your own research. Please don't do anything you are not certain about in your own mind. Don't take my word for it. I am not an expert. I have been canning for a very long time, over 35 years, but I'm not an expert. So if you have any questions, any concerns about it, don't do it. Follow what the USDA says that is safe. Again, I'll link, if you don't want to buy this book, you don't have to. Um, it's not super expensive, but, you know, if you're like me and sometimes you have no money left for anything, but you need information, I will link in the show notes the website that you can go to to get all that information. And it's easy to look things up on there. Um, you go under canning. They, they do dehydrating and freezing, I think, as well. Um, I don't have room for much of that. Dehydrating's like dead easy. Um, you just put it in a dehydrator or your oven until it's like hard and crispy. And that's dehydrated. Um, make sure everything is really, really clean. The last thing I dehydrated was apple slices. Because I had a whole lot of apples to deal with that I was given. So, um, that's about all I can tell you about this. I'll link that website. You can get the same information that's in this book on that website because it's the same people that put it together. Okay, thanks for tuning in. Hope this is helpful. Be safe. Be sure you know what you're doing. Um, check out Sutton's Day. She follows this guideline to the T. Never does anything bizarre. Um, you can trust her on anything she tells you as far as canning for sure. She's just a very, very knowledgeable woman on canning. Um, I would trust her. I would trust anything she canned, put it that way. I'd eat any of it. Um, well, except the things I can't eat anymore. But <laughs> but that's beside the point. Anyway, thank you for coming by and, and checking in with me. Um, hopefully I'll get some time to do some more videos. I might want to uh, do some on one of the things that I'm go working on these days, which is quilting. There are a lot, ton of quilting shows out there, um, but I'm doing a, because I only have a domestic sewing machine, I don't have a long arm, no place to put one, no money to buy one. Um, can't afford to send it out to someone. The quilts that I'm making are for charity. They are going to Project Hope. Um, I have a stack of 11 right now, and I've just sent an email to the lady there in our local chapter to help. If you're not aware of Project Hope, they help women um, and girls coming out of abusive homes, coming out of uh, sex trafficking, uh, rape victims, that kind of thing. They offer counseling. They offer short-term living arrangements for those that may need it. Um, and a lot of times I know from what other people have told me that a lot of women coming out of an abusive home, be that by parents or a spouse or a boyfriend, um, they leave with pretty much nothing. They, they take any opportunity they can to leave. And they have to go somewhere where they can get some help and some counseling and maybe a place that's safe to stay. Um, these people help them do that. And they are, at least nationwide, they may be across the world, I'm not sure. But they are nationwide. We have a local office here. And I have a stack of 11 quilts that I made over this year. I probably could have gotten more done, but I had sewing machine issues. But I now have one that works like a dream. Um, so I have a nice stack of quilts, everything from a twin size to a full size. Um, and it's, you know, people ask me what size quilts you make. It's like, oh no, they come out whatever size they come out with the fabric that I've got to work with. So I'm going to be reorganizing my craft room because I brought home from Texas a whole lot of fabric and sheets for backings and such like that. Uh, some of it was given to me free. Uh, very little I bought at a at a Joann's to match something else that I had. I didn't have anything that went with it um, in order to make quilts. 
And I have bought some things online through a little Facebook group um, that where people sell what kind of, you know, sewing supplies and what have you that they have. A lot of it for quilting. Um, and I have bought some panels, uh, whether it's pillow panels or those are pre-printed items, um, or it's been a larger panel that could be the center of a quilt or a wall hanging. Um, I'm choosing to use them as the center of a quilt and add borders to make it large enough to be, um, you know, a twin, at least a twin size. I'm trying not to go any smaller than that. It's just, to me, that's not as useful. I would rather, you know, if it was, you know, possibly for a child or a mother with children, I would rather see them have a twin size quilt that they could grow with and maybe not something babyish or very young childlike because they can grow with it. That's just my take on it. That's the way I choose to do it. Um, if you do something like this, you do you and go for it. Um, but I have to do something with all of the fabric that's been given to me in the past and all of the fabric that I've gathered this summer while I was in Texas with my mother. And uh, I think we've got a nice stack of quilts here that'll help keep somebody warm. I've emailed Project Hope today uh, to let them know I have 11 quilts ready to, to donate. And, uh, and yes, I did take photographs of them. So I know I have a record of what I've made, um, but that's the least of it. it. I want to help somebody who, in need, and I want them to feel warm, and I want them to feel comforted. And to me, a quilt does that. So I may be showing some of the stuff I do as I do some quilting. I do quilt as you go on my uh, domestic machine. It's just a regular sewing machine. It doesn't have an extra long harp. It doesn't have anything like that. It doesn't do anything. It only does back and forward stitches. It doesn't even do zigzag, which is fine by me. I love my old singers. And by the way, my singer's name is Pauline. And yes, I do name them. She's the only one right now that functions besides the little uh, mending one that my mom gave me that was, you know, a cheap, pla newer plastic one just, just for mending. It's, that one can do a zigzag if needed. But mostly I don't need that. Uh, straight stitch is fine. I don't need fancy stitches. So, you know, I'm kind of a plain, easy, let's do it the easy way, let's do it what works kind of person. So, okay, again, this is it. I'm done. We've already been on here 27 minutes. That's way long enough. <laughs> but can those small batches and save them? Save it for use in the future, even if it's in a half pint jar. You can add it to a soup or a stew or, you know, add it on top of ice cream if it's a fruity kind of thing. It's, it's all good. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time.